we're here to talk about supply chains, which have been completely upended, of course, uh, first by the uh, frosty relationship between the US and China, then the pandemic, now Ukraine. Um, but let's start with the news uh, from yesterday with uh, President Biden G uh, meeting for the first time in, in person uh, since Biden became president. What's your take on the meeting? Well, I'm delighted that they had this meeting and that it took place yesterday because I've, I've only been asked about it since the summer. So I'm glad that it finally took place. Um, look, I think it's a, it's a really good thing. It's really important. Um, I think rightly there's been a lot of attention on um, this particular meeting. Um, it is in person, was in person. Um, and um, I was just uh, looking at the pictures this morning and um, observing uh, that the body language is very powerful from the photos of the two leaders greeting each other, standing together. You can see that there is a familiarity between them, a comfort between them in terms of uh, uh, relating to each other. And I think that that's a really powerful signal to the rest of the world in terms of two leaders who um, are, are capable of managing a tremendously complex relationship. If you look at the US-China relationship, I say this over and over again because um, uh, it's my way of emphasizing the truth of it, which is uh, the US-China relationship is of profound consequence, not just to our two countries and our people, but for the entire world. Um, what you saw yesterday uh, was that the two presidents had a very candid uh, discussion about uh, their respective priorities, um, perspectives across a range of issues. I think that the conversation was over three hours long. President Biden made clear that the United States will continue to vigorously compete with China, including by making investments at home. And you've seen the Inflation Reduction Act, the Chips and Science Act, and by aligning with allies and partners where we have uh, shared interests and challenges with respect to um, the impacts of uh, Chinese policies on our economies and our people. At the same time, President Biden uh, noted that the United States and China must work together on transnational issues like climate change, global food security. You trade, also trade didn't seem to come up. You know. Well, it did, right. it did. I mean, I think that you have to, you have to know the words to look for. So President Biden has also indicated that he raised with President Xi something that um, uh, we have raised consistently, U.S. concerns about the negative economic impacts of China's non-market economic policies on American workers, families, our economy, which are impacts that are not just felt by us, but by others around the world as well. Um, I think that uh, uh, one of the most important takeaways is that um, the two leaders have tasked their senior officials to continue to communicate and we are looking forward to building on the open and candid conversations that we have been having with our counterparts in Beijing. Are you joining Blinken when he goes to Beijing? <laughs> I've not received my invitation yet. Not yet. <laughs> okay, maybe we should book a ticket. Uh, if you look at tariffs, I mean, you sound pretty optimistic that we're sort of on a path uh, to, to an improved relationship. But do you, do you see any movement on tariffs in the next year or so? I don't know about improved relationship, but I do, I do want to emphasize I'm optimistic about um, the capability to manage an important and complex relationship. With respect to tariffs, again, I think that is part and parcel with the non-economic practices concerns, and we will continue to work on those issues. Why do you keep the tariffs? Why do we keep the tariffs? Yes. Well, um, <clears throat> I'm thinking about how far back to go in terms of the narrative of tariffs. The tariffs ha uh, have been imposed um, under Section 301 of the Trade uh, Act of 1974. Uh, that is a trade enforcement statute. Those tariffs are intended to be a uh, rebalancing, playing field leveling measure. Uh, if you recall, the tariffs that were imposed were uh, uh, at the conclusion of a lengthy investigation into uh, Chinese intellectual property rights abuses and forced tech transfer practices. Challenges that not just the American economy and our stakeholders have experienced in doing business with China, engaging with the Chinese economy, but frankly, I think um, uh, everyone understands and has experienced to be a considerable challenge. So those tariffs remain in place because the underlying issues are still there. 
And uh, we have been engaging with China on the tariffs, on the underlying issues, on the non-market economic practices and their impacts. We've not got resolution yet. We will continue to press. I mean, knowing what you know now, do you think it was a mistake that uh, China was allowed to enter the WTO? Um, I've had many versions of this conversation, um, including with members of Congress who were in Congress, um, who uh, took a very difficult vote, either ones who voted for or against permanent, uh, permanent normal uh, trading relations with China. Um, look, uh, what's happened in the past has happened. I would say that uh, whether you um, look back and think that um, uh, it was naive um, or hopeful, um, I think that uh, it's neither here nor there. Um, well, let me just say this, and I think um, this relates to so many aspects of the U.S.-China relationship, and in particular, uh, the economic relationship, which is, which is my area, which is that um, <clears throat> I think we should remember that uh, nothing is predestined. And so in terms of how uh, we have seen the trajectory of China's participation at the WTO and where we are today in the relationship between China and the United States, China and the rest of the world, uh, I don't think that there's any reason why this necessarily had to be the result. Where we are today is the result of many decisions that were taken and not taken by China and by others, including the United States. I think the key question is where do we go from here and again, I want to remind everyone, <clears throat> nothing is predestined. Where we go from here is going to also be the outcome of decisions that we take on both sides and around the world.